There's a lot that happens at WWDC 2022. Let's dive right into it. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Wow, this is a jam-packed WWDC. From the keynote, we got a new ship, new hardware, and also update to all of Apple software. The update to their software is something that we can expect, and this is something that's going to happen every year. However, there are certain features in the iPad OS that I want to touch on that are going to be really awesome for Creative Pros, but that's coming up later on in this video. First, we're going to focus on the ship and the new hardware. What we didn't get from this WWDC is a new Mac Pro. So based on what Apple is doing right now, launching the M2, and putting the M2 into their new hardware, my guess is that we may see the Mac Pro later on this year, and it's probably going to be based on the M2 architecture, and we're not going to get a Mac Pro that is based on the M1 architecture anymore. So if you're hoping for the Mac Pro to be based on the M1 or 4 M1 Ultra stitched together, I don't think that's going to be the case. But let's talk about the M2, because the M2 has been one of the most talked about processors even before it was released. I mean, since the launch of the initial M1, everyone has been predicting what Apple is going to do with the next generation silicon. So now we have it. Overall from the M2, what I can see is that we still have eight CPU core, which are going to be divided in a very similar fashion to the M1. Four performance for efficiency core. But what we get is an improvement in efficiency in the processor itself. And these CPU are supposed to be 18% faster. Obviously, you know me, if you've been following the channel, we are going to order these machine in and run massive amount of tests on them. The other thing too is that you also get the option to get more GPU cores on the system now, whereas on the M1 you have the 7 or the 8 GPU. Now you can get up to 10 GPU core and these 10 GPU can be up to 35% faster. So obviously efficiency is definitely playing a big role here. And these ships consume so less power anyway, I'm not even going to talk about that much at all. It has a 16 core neural engine. Obviously, Apple has been building these in. I wish that there were more apps that really target the neural engine in the daily workflow. So they're building the architect and the platform for the future that I hope more app developer would take advantage of this. But most significantly, I think in the M2, what I really like is the fact that Apple have put in the high performance media engine and the ProRes video encoder decoder engine on the ship. This is pretty much bringing the ship with regards to video on par, I think, with the M1 Pro. Obviously, it's not gonna be as fast as the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra that has double or quadruple the encoder-decoder engine compared to the M1 Pro, but I mean, this is a move in the right direction. So if you're just starting out doing video or if you're just doing light video, I mean, this would be a great chip for you. And if you're doing photography, I always said that the M1 platform, just the M1 alone, is not necessarily a computer created for Pro, but I think with the M2, this is gonna nudge is closer in that aspect where if you're a pro but you're really doing light work all the time you're just doing a few files in photoshop doing a lot of printing and you're not processing a large volume of raw files for instance i think this may be something that you may want to consider adding your workflow obviously like i said we'll get the machine in we'll run the test and i'll give you my thoughts on it now, a couple of other things about this M2 ship as well is that we now have the option to equip this ship with up to 24 gigabytes of memory. And for this, the memory bandwidth have increased to 100 gigabytes per second. It is a 50% increase. That is really great. However, let me put it this way. We're not really seeing a lot of apps right now that are really saturating the memory bandwidth on this unified memory. So I think that this is a great improvement, is building for the future, but as far as will you see a difference in the daily workflow, I would probably say you're not going to see that much of. Now let's talk about the fully redesigned Apple MacBook Air M2. Obviously, Apple is still keeping the MacBook Air M1 in the lineup, so you have the option to choose something that is a little bit more on the budget or the latest and greatest. A couple things about this machine that I think is interesting is the fact that it looks very similar to a 14 or 16 inch macbook pro just been shrunken down and also made slimmer i am going to look forward to testing this machine when 
I can order it and it arrives in the studio. MagSafe is making a comeback and this is the same MagSafe that you can use inside your 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro as well. This is something really great to see because on these machines there are not that many ports to start out with and most of the time on the previous generation you have to decide between charging it and plugging your display and hard drive and everything else in or you have to get a hub or a dock to use with the computer. This is going to help curtail the need of that. I mean, obviously, if you're going to plug in so many devices, you may still need that. But overall, I think it is a move in the right direction. And now you can plug in more things without having to worry if your computer is going to stay charged or not. And that's really great. There has been camera improvement on this computer. There obviously is a notch now, as you can see, and the camera on the notch now is a 1080p camera. And this is going to create a point of contention when we look at this compared to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is pretty much using the same design, but just with the updated chip on the inside. Battery life is going to last for a very long time, not worry about that at all. But particularly what I think is gonna be interesting about this machine is the display. 500 nits, billions of color, P3 color space, all really cool. What I like to see is whether Apple is going to include all the different reference mode inside this new MacBook Air display or not, because if they do, that's going to mark a big shift in the paradigm for the way how they are making displays inside these portable machines. And it's also signifying to us that both the Pro and the non-Pro displays now are going to have these reference mode, which I think are really cool actually. It, I wouldn't necessarily say it eliminates calibration, but it brings everyone that are using Apple product on par with their amazing calibration already. Now you can go in and specify the different modes that you want to use. As always with MacBook Air, there's no fan on the inside. So I really wanna see what happens when we really push the computer in the long run because the MacBook Air M1 compared to, for example, the 13 inch MacBook Pro M1, there were quite a few differences, especially when you're running heavy tasks at duration, the MacBook Air tends to slow down and throttle quite a bit. The MacBook Pro didn't do that, so that would be very interesting to do a comparison. Now, a couple other things I want to mention about this new MacBook Air M2 is that it comes in four different colors, and one of the things I want to touch on is the different power adapter option that you have to choose. So we're gonna go look at this configurator and see what options you have to choose from. So. Based on what we're seeing so far, you can choose the M2 with eight core CPU, eight GPU, or you can upgrade that to a 10 GPU version for $100 more. Depends on what you do. Most of the time, if you're really just doing work with, I would say like any photo software, you may not necessarily need the GPU unless that software can go in and target that specifically. And obviously I'm looking at these configuration from a pro photographer. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, hinting at there. As far as memory go, we can now upgrade to 24 gigabytes, which I think is really cool, but there's something interesting about this 24 gigabyte memory and I'm gonna share with you in just a second. As far as storage go, you can upgrade to two terabyte in the Pro one, you can upgrade to eight terabyte. And yes, when you really start to upgrade to storage, it does get pricey in a very similar way. But this MacBook Air also has different power adapter option. Obviously, I'm choosing the base model to start out with and you can choose the 30 watt power adapter if you choose the other one, for example, the, this other one right here that is already upgraded to the 10 GPU, you have the option to choose between the 35 watt dual USB-C compact power adapter or the 67 watt one that can do fast charging. And it is the same price as you're seeing right now. My recommendation is to go with fast charging 67 watts instead of going with a dual charger. And the reason why is, the, is as follows, meaning that if you need to charge your iPad, your phone, your watch, whatever that may be, you can always plug that into your machine and charge it up. I would rather go for fast charging first so I can juice up the machine as fast as possible. And then if I need to charge my devices, I can always charge them through the machine by plugging into the USB-C Thunderbolt ports on the side of the machine. So that's my thoughts on the power adapter in general for the MacBook Air if you go out and configure one. Now let's talk about the 13 inch MacBook Pro M2, which I was expecting Apple to update the design in lockstep with the MacBook Air. However, we didn't receive that. We still have the touch bar. We still have no MagSafe. It still uses the previous generation 720p webcam that was in the M1. So this is not the same 1080p that has been updated on the MacBook Air M2. 
I'd say overall, this is not necessarily the improvement that I want for this computer. The memory, the storage, you can still update. There's no option to use the power adapter. And I think the only thing working for this machine is the fact that it has a fan on the logic board that will help actively dissipate heat from the silicon compared to the air. I mean, that may be the only reason why you want to consider this machine compared to just the air in general. But overall, looking at this, I would say like if it was me, I would probably use the air just because it represents so much improvement in Apple design ethos and just approach to computer comparing to this one, which is a design that we have been seeing for multiple generations of computers already. A couple things that I also note about the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 13 inch, all these M2 computer is the memory. So for $400, you can upgrade to 24 gigabytes of memory on these machines. However, on, for instance, the M1 Pro, M1 Max, for the same $400, we can get up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So there is a memory premium price on these machines compared to the more pro machines on the market today. As far as storage goes, the price is pretty much the same. There's no difference whatsoever. It's just that the max storage you can really apply to these machines is two terabyte. And as I already mentioned before, I think that the external display output on these machines are still going to be limited to one. And this is actually done intentionally by Apple because if you need more than that, you should start to look at the pro silicon instead of just the regular version of a silicon. Now, with that said, I also want to point out a few things that Apple have also released two versions of 35 watt dual USB-C port power adapter. The one you can configure with the MacBook Air is the compact one. However, they also have a full size one, but you can't really get that. I just thought it's something that you may want to note. But like I said before, if you're ordering the MacBook Air, I would go with the 67 watt power adapter so you can do fast charging on there and just charge your other devices through your computer. And lastly, one thing that I also noticed as well that they have announced is a USB-C to MagSafe 3 now comes in different colors. Didn't really realize this until I really saw this posting. And now that I have my MagSafe plug into my machine, this is a silver one that has shipped with the Space Gray MacBook Pro. And yes, the color doesn't match. So once you realize it, you will always notice that now. Sadly, I already have purchased too many extra one of these to use in the studio already, so I'm not going to be buying another one, but it's just something interesting to note there. And that's pretty much all that Apple have announced hardware-wise, which I think is really cool. And as I have already mentioned, I think these are going to be really great computers for anyone who's just starting out in pro workflow, who may not necessarily know how much they're going to push their hardware yet. These are really great set machine. I think this is moving these entry-level machines more into the pro realm than the previous generation has done. I mean, granted, there are going to be many people out there that claims that the M1 works fine for pro workflow. Truth be told, for what I do, going through thousands of raw files at a time, it's not really there yet in the M1, and I hope that the M2 will bring it closer. And this also opens up a lot more room too, for example, for the M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Ultra, that it's going to come down the road. So this is definitely an exciting pipeline from Apple with new future silicons and also product that's coming down the road. And with this being Apple Worldwide Developer Conference, we expect them to release major updates to all their operating system. The one that I want to point us towards is iPad OS because a lot of features I think is going to help make the iPad Pro, especially the one with the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro M1 with the Liquid Retina XDR display, much more capable. The hardware of this iPad has never been in question. It's always a software that wasn't really that capable. But with the new iPad OS releasing this fall, I think it's going to make this a really awesome platform. So some of the things I want to highlight is the fact that it now going to have Stage Manager, which allows you to group multiple apps together. You can resize your window freely. That's going to be really great. Currently, if you link this iPad to an external display, most of the time it mirrors unless that app has been coded. For example, like if you're using iMovie, for instance, it can utilize the full screen, but otherwise it's always going to mirror what you're seeing on the iPad. Well, with the new iPad OS that's coming this fall, now you can utilize full screen and you can also utilize Stage Manager. This is definitely going to expand the iPad Pro capability beyond what we have seen so far. And it's definitely a move in the right direction. 
In addition to this, there are two screen features that I'm really looking forward to test out, one of them being scaling so that you can see better. I think that this is definitely going to help out if you link up, for example, your iPad to a 4K or 5K display. You can choose different scaling options so you can see the text and read it much clearer, much easier. That's going to be something that I'll look forward to testing. And lastly is reference color, which I kind of predicted that Apple would do something like this. and. I mentioned that in my Liquid Retina XDR display, the one that's inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro video, that if Apple had brought that feature, that reference mode that I've been showing you guys on my channel, how to calibrate, how to set it up to the iPad, it will make this device a really awesome content creation device for creative workflow on the go. And the fact that they're bringing that to the iPad, I'm super excited. So obviously I'll be testing all those features this fall. I'm not going to install any beta OS on my iPad because I need this to function perfectly and I don't want to deal with bugs and everything on the beta OS. But when it comes fall, I'll definitely release a video about that. And I'll also be doing massive amount of testing on the M2, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for those content. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you're new and in our trust.